This serial killer gets stylized as we have a look at the new Mezco release of the Friday 13th, Jason Voorhees. The star of over 11 films, Jason is a virtually unstoppable killing machine. He's also the latest character to be immortalized in Mezco's signature super deformed style. In addition to having 10 points of articulation, Mezco's deluxe stylized Friday 13th Jason Voorhees figure comes ready to slay with his signature bloody axe and machete, which have been at the end of countless unhappy campers. Before we have a look at Jason, why don't we have a look at how tall the figure stands? Sounds good to you? Sounds good to me. The figure stands exactly seven inches in height. If you want to translate that to centimeters, then the figure is 17.8. Like the packaging touts, he comes with several accessories, all of which being bloodied. No, that that's not true. That's not true. His hand technically doesn't have blood on it. I don't want to be told I'm misrepresenting but he does have two bloodied weapons of destruction one of which being his machete which has a nice perfected blood splatter Mezco has gotten better and better when it comes to the blood splatter effect that's across the blade portion of this machete a far cry from some of the stuff that we were getting long time ago Back in its heyday, when Mesco was doing the Cinema of Fear, anybody remember those? Did a review of those a long time ago, if you guys want to check them out. Somewhat unbearable to watch some of my older videos, but nonetheless, here is his machete. He does also come included with a quite considerably bloodied axe. Or at the very least, it's bloody around this portion. The handle portion remains relatively unscathed. There's no, there's no blood on it. The blade uh, is relatively thin at the tip, but it's not, certainly not sharp. You don't have to worry that it's going to be cutting yourself as blood then runs down my finger, down my hand. No, it wouldn't. I shouldn't joke about that. So he comes with two of those, two different weapons, of course, and then he comes with an interchangeable hand. Now, this hand, on the other hand, i got to get a t-shirt made into that. The other hand is very difficult out of packaging to get weapons into his hand. You really have to pry them through. So I would recommend, and I haven't done it just yet, but I just wanted to show you how it looks because I know I did do a figure review of the uh, the NECA Jason and I had pre-heated the hand, pried the finger apart, and then uh, put the machete through. I wanted to instead show you how it looks out of packaging, that it is a very difficult hand to pry open. I guess you could use your superhuman strength to pry that open. The last thing I certainly would not want to do, though, is break the uh, the machete. Though it is a relatively thick blade, still would not want to break a machete. That would really ruin my day. Uh, so those are his accessories. Let's have a look at Jason Voorhees as a super stylized rendition. Uh, pretty neat, I have to admit. I do like this figure quite a bit. We just recently had a look at I say we. I'd like to think that we're all kind of doing this together. We're all kind of friends hanging out. We had a look at the mega release of Jason not too long ago. And I have to say that this one is a better looking Jason just all around. It doesn't have as much the posability as the other one did. The other one did have also fabric uh, making up his outfit. But I think this is just a better looking Jason, well-rounded. It also so happens to have the option of having a removable mask, which I'll talk about a little bit in a second before we do that. Let's have a look at Jason Voorhees' mask. Now, this is Friday 13th Part 3. Part 3, 3D. I made the mistake of calling it Part 3D. Um, but this is the Part 3, 3D Jason Voorhees. You can really tell by the fact that he doesn't have the wedged cut at the top of his mask. Relatively clean looking mask as well. Wearing his trademark outfit of the under white shirt, the olive colored outer shirt, and then almost silver like khaki pants. I guess they're not quite khaki. I think khaki is... There's a debate about whether khaki is the pants or the color. 
I think that was in an episode of Mad About You. I don't know why I'm quoting Mad About You, but these, I think, are more accurate colors to how he has in the film. A lot of people debate the fact that his pants are, like, really more silver than they are actually a true uh, beige khaki khaki pants. And then, of course, he's got his, his boots there. It's really nicely done, nicely painted on the top there. You can see that he's actually got caps on the fronts of his boots, which are a slightly different color than the, the rest of his boots, which are more of a darker brown. There's the back of his figure with his trademark Jason hump on the top there, the hunched back Jason. Very notable thing about the part three Jason above all the other ones. So, okay. All right, all right. All right. I know you guys wanted to see the removal of the mask. So we can go ahead and just very carefully slide the mask off. Kind of like other Jasons that have had removable masks, there is usually this little ledge point that the strapping sits against. So it's a lot easier usually to kind of take it from the front pry it back and then just kind of once that's back kind of pry this up as well and you can very cleanly take that off Ooh, what a disfigured face of jason Voorhees! i like this face sculpt really a lot uh, by the way the mask is a softer plastic it's a little bit more easy to manipulate and we're just going to put the mask down for a second because of course we want to look at jason's disfigured face that sounds so cruel. If, you, if you're just really listening to the audio of this review and you're not actually seeing anything, it sounds really mean for me to say, let's all get a look at the deformed Jason face. You monster. Anyways, I do really like this face a lot. Not only is it a super deformed, no pun intended, super stylized rendition of Jason, but really the paint is done exceptionally well on this almost to the point where I really wish this was what we got for the larger mega scale that had the audio as well. You can see like all the, all the imperfections, if you will, to his face are very nicely then airbrushed and accented with some additional paint. The paints seem to vary from colors almost like a peach color, a little bit darker colors, closer to more of a reddish peach color. He still has this deformed one ear you can see how he's got some nice airbrushing around the eyes there. It's quite almost like the color of oil, if you will, that they've just gone in there and painted those areas around his eyelids, like around the little areas, the sunken in areas, if you will, of his eyes. His eyes aren't nearly offset as perhaps they should be. One eye should be a little bit further, but overall I'm pretty happy with the head sculpt. I also like the fact that the, you can see a tongue in there. Some gums and some teeth. Those are summer teeth, after all. Some are there, some are not. I'm here all day. And then, like I said, we've got the really nice coloring here on the uh, the outfit. It's such a good head sculpt, in fact, that I almost would want to display him without it, or at the very least, kind of like what he had when he like lets himself down from the noose. You can see like the partial reveal of his face. Maybe display him like that as well. I can only hope that Mezco will follow suit and give us other versions of Jason's, other renditions of Jason's from the different, you know, various sequels that would follow. Because I really do like, I like where this is going with this particular line. Really have collected the other super deformed, super stylized renditions of the characters. Um, I think one of the, some of the other ones I've done is, of course, the Sam from Trick or Treat. I feel as also I, I might have done a Michael Myers a long time ago. Those slightly older videos, a little more painful to watch. At least I think so. So we'll go ahead and just put his head down. And uh, just to show you as well, we can go ahead and take... Now this hand here, unlike this hand, you can see has a slightly more opened, broader opening to it. It does make things a little bit more easier, I find, to get his weapons in place without having to go the route of heating the hand. Still, you may have to use some super strength just to kind of pry the fingers away from themselves so you can then fit the machete right through. And you can see he holds both the machete, like that, or you can also display him with the ax. Taking the machete, I find, is a little bit more trickier to get out because it's got that little extra knob on the end. And then we'll go ahead and take the axe. We'll just slide that through. I currently have it on a pre-order. It should be arriving soon enough. There is also a... Slide the axe right through his hand. 
There is also an Entertainment Earth exclusive version of this guy that has a glow-in-the-dark mask. I don't know if he actually has other accessories to him, whether he's just going to have the same axe and the same, same machete, but uh, he's going to have a glow-in-the-dark head, and uh, when he eventually comes, we'll uh, do a review of him. And uh, there, there's what he looks like with the, with the axe in his hand. His hands are kind of more so like, you know, one of those hands, if you want to pose the figure, I often do this a lot with thumbnails because it just looks so cool. These are sort of more his gripping hand. Um, it really doesn't work well to hold the axe. As you can see, there's not really enough of his fingers that are gripping onto it. I kind of wish that they could have gripped him a little bit more. At the very least, give him an extra, extra hand. No, not that hand, but another hand where it was actually him gripping this a little bit better as opposed to, you know, he just sort of is holding it, but he's not really holding it. We're pretending, but we know it. it's not really working. It's not really working for this guy. So that's another thing I would have probably done differently too is just add an extra hand for Jason. As for his posability, let's go ahead and look at that right now. His head rotates all the way around. Nice, big, bulbous ball joint. That's a lot of bees. Head rotates all the way around. It hinges up and down. It angles left and right. Shoulders hinge out. They rotate all the way around. This often brings me back, when I look at certain figures, sometimes it brings me back to when I was doing the early reviewings here on YouTube. And some of my earliest fond memories are figures like, for example, the Mezco Cinema Fear line, which again, really, this particular of Jason reminds me so much of that because he doesn't have the posability on the lower legs. Instead, he's just staction. Staction basically means you can't do anything with it. They're pre-posed, statue-posed action figures, and that's basically what you're getting with the lower legs. Very nicely painted. Very sadly, no pose other than this. That's all you can really do. So he's got pose building the head, the arms, uh, the elbows, also the swiveling on the forearm areas of the elbows, and then you can rotate the hands. And that's it. And then again, waist swivel. The figure sort of does have a lean forward, like when you stand the figure up, you can see he kind of angles to the side. I can't find a way to compensate for that. I guess you could kind of bring the head up, but he always seems to have like a look like he's leaning against a wall. It's a trade-off that I'm willing to accept because from the front, ooh, this figure looks oh so good. Ironically enough, or maybe it's not ironic, but I did end up picking up the stylized Jason that we just finished looking at in this review. At the same time, I, I picked up the mega 14-inch Jason that had the audio. I had ordered them from the comic book store many months ago, and they showed up. That usually is what ends up happening. You go in to pick up one thing, and they say, oh, hey, by the way, while you're here, we've got also this other stuff that you had ordered. My wallet goes, sigh. But anyways, I did pick up this one at the same time as the Mega Size Jason, and in all honesty, I like this figure a lot more than I like the Mega Size Jason. This one's cute, this one's small, it does have posability where it counts, and he's a really neat looking rendition of Jason. Super stylized works well for this Jason, super deformed, and I don't mean just his face, but the super deformed nature of these smaller scale figure releases from Mezco work extremely well for some characters over others. Jason just so happens to work extremely well, and I'm looking forward to seeing what the Entertainment Earth uh, version of this guy is going to be. I think the only difference is that he's going to have a glow-in-the-dark mask. That's really about it. But, but, what I could do is display one Jason with his mask slightly up, the other Jason with the axe in his hand. I could kind of mix and match them so they look a little bit different from one another. Definitely looking forward to that one arriving. I ordered it by the mail, so it should be coming whenever the post office decides they want to deliver mail, which sometimes is a little on the slow side. Either way, I like this figure quite a bit. Price point is a lot more affordable, too, to your wallet. Your wallet will thank you later. This guy, I think, will cost you about $30 to $35. A far cry from the Mega Scale Jason that we had a look at, which was over $100, about $110. This guy's affordable, he's small, he's compact, he's super deformed, and he's really cool. He does have a removable mask. Did I also forget to mention, he's really cool. Pick this guy up if you can find him. Like I said now, he should be available at your local comic book store. Today we were having a look at the brand new released Mezco Toys, Friday the 13th. This was the super deformed signature collection I think it's called the Super Deformed Style Signature of Jason Voorhees. That's going to be a long title to put in the video description. 
Sometimes that really sucks. You put that all in and then YouTube says too many characters, too many characters. You got too many characters. Keep having to kind of abbreviate. That's abbreviated, abbreviated. That's a brief. Uh, if you guys want to go back and have a look at some of my other Mezco figure releases or figure reviews, you can check those out in the playlist. And also if Jason is kind of your cup of tea, he's sort of my cup of tea, there is a playlist designated just to the Camp, Camp Crystal Lake Killer. So if you guys want to go back and have a look at all the stuff that I've done, Jason, up to this point, everything will be there. Promsies. I, proms, promsies. Either way, guys, thanks for watching as you always do. Make sure you hit that little subscribe button if you haven't already. And swing by the homepage when you finish this video and see if there's any videos on my videos section. I know I just said videos a lot that you may have missed along the way. That helps a long way in this channel and guarantees you that if I may have posted something, you guys may have overlooked it because you were at Nana's house or you went to the zoo for the day. It's okay. You can find them all in the videos section on my homepage. Thanks for watching, guys. I'll see you next time.